this week at Starbase. Booster 12 and Ship 30 are stacked at the launch site, cryo-tested and certified ready for the fifth flight test. Salvage components of Booster 11 are shipped to Starbase for analysis and construction continues at Orbital Pad B. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off the week, in the early hours of Friday morning, Booster 12 and its hot staging ring rolled out of the build site and onto Highway 4. The pair then continued down the road to the launch complex, where the booster was taken straight between the waiting arms of Mechazilla. As the booster was being moved to the launch site, Ship 31 was being rolled out of the Massey outpost and onto the highway. Over a several hour stretch, the presumed Flight 6 Starship made its way up the road and passed right in front of our rover cam as it turned into the build site. Once there, the rocket was taken directly into Mega Bay 2. Meanwhile, back at the launch site, the LR-11000 crane was moved over towards Orbital Pad A. The crane was positioned near the launch tower in preparation for the eventual installation of the hot stage ring onto the top of Booster 12. About two hours after Booster 12 arrived at Orbital Pad A, the chopsticks closed around the Super Heavy booster in preparation for the coming lift. Shortly after dawn, Mechazilla lifted the Flight 5 booster off its transport stand and began to climb up the tower. Unlike previous lifts though, the chopsticks did not immediately begin to transfer the rocket to the launch mount. Instead, the Super Heavy was raised all the way up to the top of the tower and into the catching position as SpaceX continues to prepare their systems for the attempted retrieval of the booster. Back up the road at the build site, one of the Mega Bay 2's bridge cranes was hooked up to Ship 31 with a two-point lifter and the vehicle was lifted into the air. Once the ship was clear, the static fire stand was moved out and a transport stand moved in, onto which the ship was then lowered. Shortly before noon, Booster 12 was secured to the launch mount and released by the chopsticks. The arms were then raised up the tower, rotated back over, and lowered into position to await Ship 30. Around that same time, an SPMT loaded with counterweights made its way along Highway 4 and turned into the build site. It then proceeded back towards Mega Bay 2 in preparation for an eventual move of Ship 31. As the SPMT was approaching the ship bay, over in the rocket garden, Ship 30 began moving, heading up Remedios Avenue toward Highway 4. The Flight 5 Starship then turned onto the highway and began rolling towards the launch site. Once it arrived, the ship was parked towards the back of the former landing pad. About an hour and a half later, Booster 12's transport stand was moved away from the staging area at the base of the tower, clearing the way for Ship 30. A short time later, the Starship once again began to roll. The vehicle was moved over to Orbital Pad A and parked just outside the waiting arms of Mechazilla. Meanwhile, the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount was extended and attached to Booster 12, connecting the rocket to the ground support infrastructure. Back up the road at the build site, Ship 31 emerged from its brief stay in Mega Bay 2. The Starship was then rolled through the ring yard area and parked outside of High Bay for a short stay before eventually moving into the building. As the Flight 6 ship was moving into High Bay, the Flight 5 ship began moving in between the chopsticks. At that same time, the LR-11000 picked up the load spreader and positioned it above the hot stage ring for the riggers to hook up. It appeared to take a bit of work to get Ship 30 properly positioned, with it being moved back out from between the arms for a brief time before finally being properly maneuvered into its lifting position. In the early hours of Saturday morning, the crane lifted the Flight 5 hot staging ring and installed it atop a Booster 12. Waiting crews were up in a pair of man lifts to assist in guiding the article into the correct position. Then, about a quarter past ten that morning, Ship 30 was lifted by the chopsticks for the first time. Over the next hour, the rocket was slowly raised to the top of the launch tower. Once it was high enough to clear the hot staging ring, the Starship was rotated over and lowered into position, completing the first full stack of the Flight 5 vehicles. Several hours later, the ship quick disconnect was extended and connected to Ship 30. Over the next two hours, SpaceX performed two full-speed retraction tests of the quick disconnect, ensuring the recently repaired linkages were working properly. 
On Sunday afternoon, the detonation suppression system under the launch mount was tested as SpaceX checked off another box on their checklist for full stack testing. Then, less than a half hour later, testing proceeded onward and Ship 30's aft flaps underwent a round of actuation tests. About two hours after that, SpaceX moved on to the testing of four hypersonic grid fins at the top of Booster 12. On Monday morning, the road was closed and the chopsticks released Ship 30. The arms then climbed the rest of the way up the tower to the launch position as SpaceX prepared for a full stack test. Shortly after noon, Stage Zero had been chilled down and cryogenics began flowing into both Ship 30 and Booster 12. The vehicle's tanks were partially loaded before eventually being detanked. Thanks to a post from SpaceX, we know that this closure allowed them to complete the propellant loading test and final pre-flight checkouts for the fifth integrated flight test. Later that afternoon, Ship 34's now combined nose cone and payload sections rolled out of High Bay following their stacking last week. The stack was then taken back inside of the Star Factory for additional work before the rest of the stacking operations began in Mega Bay 2. Early Tuesday morning, a concrete pump truck arrived at the launch site and unfurled its boom near the base of launch tower number 2. Over the next four and a half hours, the pump worked steadily, placing fresh concrete as crews continue to work building out the infrastructure for Orbital Pad B. That night, workers were spotted on the orbital launch mount, working to remove the scaffolding from its top. Despite the expected delay in receiving the Flight 5 launch license, SpaceX seems to be moving forward with the launch preparations. On Wednesday morning, Ship 32 was shifted in the rocket garden. The vehicle was picked up from between Ship 16 and 20 along the edge of the wetlands and moved over to where the original engine installation stand used to be. It's not yet clear why the vehicle was relocated. A few hours later, while a crane was busy removing the counterweights from the SPMTs used to move Ship 32, nearby another crane was attached to Booster 4's aft section. This could very well indicate that the SpaceX scrapping crews have this remnant of the old booster next up on their agenda. That afternoon, down at the launch site, the landing rails were lowered on the chopsticks. The arms were then lowered and once again closed in around Ship 30. A couple of hours later, down at the base of the stack, workers hooked a crane up to one of the launch mount's booster alignment pins. The mechanism was then lifted out and lowered to the ground, indicating that Booster 12's next removal from the mount should come under the power of its 33 Raptor engines. Late that afternoon, the offshore supply ship HOS Ridgewind made its way up the shipping channel to the port of Brownsville. The vessel had recently been hired to salvage parts of Booster 11 from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. According to Elon, SpaceX recovered parts of the Flight 4 Super Heavy for analysis. These up-close pictures were brought to you by Plain Hooky Fishing Charters. On Thursday, over at the office site, a crane was seen installing another column on the back side of the building. Since finally securing the last piece of property that was in the way of construction, crews have been working diligently in that area to expand the Star Factory building towards the office. Around that same time, workers went up on a lift in front of the office and appeared to be spraying the windows in front of them, possibly performing leak checks. That afternoon, a section of the launch mount for Orbital Pad B was offloaded at the Sanchez site. In recent weeks, crews have installed new foundation and embeds over there to facilitate the construction of this hardware. That evening, SpaceX performed another round of ship quick disconnect testing with the interface being retracted from Ship 30, then reattached two times. Later on that night, we saw a laser show in the top of Mega Bay 2. It's not clear if SpaceX was celebrating their preparations for Flight 5, perhaps the completion of the top floor of the new Mega Bay, or something else altogether. Switching over to Florida, a slower week for SpaceX at the Cape kicked off Friday morning with Doug returning to port with both of the fairing halves from the Galileo FM-26 and FM-32 mission. About two hours later, Just Read the Instructions also returned and was towed up to the space dock carrying Falcon 9 Booster 1067 from that same launch. 
Less than three hours later, the first stage was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for processing. On Tuesday, with its legs now safely stowed, Booster 1067 was lifted and transferred to an awaiting transporter for its return to Roberts Road. It should be noted that the unusually slow week for SpaceX's East Coast Marine Fleet is due to preparations for a Falcon Heavy launch at Launch Complex 39A and the Crew-9 mission at Space Launch Complex 40, both being launches that require longer lead times at their prospective sites. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.